Matt. Dirty math teacher. Parabola, parabola slalom? 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 I've actually never said that out loud before. Parabola slalom. By now you should know how parabolas work, so let's get to the screen. Warm up number one. Screen number one. Drag the movable point so that the parabola passes between the gates. When you finish, continue to the next screen. Okay, so you just drag it until... Yeah, until the line goes through those two red points and the, the points turn red. Pretty simple. Screen two, warm up number two. Drag each, drag the movable point, so the parabola, okay, same, same idea. But now we have three different gates that we're gonna have to pass the parabola through. So let's flip this over and move this over here and move this over there. And there we go. You have little handles, it's pretty easy. Okay, I think it's gonna get harder. Screen number three, challenge number one. Change one number in the equation so that the parabola passes between the gates, then press try it. There's the parabola. If you know anything about parabolas, you will know that that minus one right here is the y-intercept, and sure enough, it's the y-intercept right there at zero comma negative one. So we want it to go at least to negative five, I'm assuming, so let's just change that one number to a five. And there you go. Screen number four, challenge number two. Write an equation, okay, same deal. Okay, we have to write our own equation. Remember, folks, I like copying and pasting and just fudging things around, so I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste this because I'm lazy. Let's do that. Obviously, we know what this one is gonna look like. Let's flip it upside down first. If we learned anything uh, from the previous Parabola videos that we were working on for Desmos, if we do this, it'll flip it upside down because, and the reason I want to flip it upside down is because this, the gates are angled such that we probably want to flip it upside down, okay? You probably could do a gigantic one, and maybe that's a challenge problem uh, where the A is positive, but we'll leave it at that. Uh, we probably want this Y-intercept to go a little bit higher, let's say four, so we want to change this negative five to be a positive four. Okay, good, and then we want it to be wider. Remember how to get it wider? We gotta change that A number to be less than one, but greater than zero. So let's see, the, or the absolute value of it, that is. So let's change it to one half, see what happens. Okay, so it needs to be wider than one half. So I'm saying, I mean, smaller than one half, so let's go to one third. Uh, let's jump quite a bit higher, let's go to one sixth. See how that works. Yep, that'll work. Screen five, challenge number three. Okay, so, wow, what kind of parabola is this one gonna be? I'm assuming it's gonna kinda do this, where it's gonna go through there. So the vertex, I'm gonna put it right here at four comma four. If you remember the vertex, I'm just copying basic by the way. If you remember the vertex form, right, this is gonna be the Y value of your vertex, and then we wanna put this X, inside its own little parentheses here. And then we want it to be positive four. So, well, uh, let's see. How do we get it to be positive four? Well, you're just gonna put minus four, see how that works. So again, okay, almost. We want this to be upside down, so let's change that Y value to be negative. Let's try that, okay. A little bit closer, we want it to be a little bit wider. Let's try one half again. I'm gonna start off with one half. Try it. Okay, a little bit narrower. So let's try hmm, two thirds. Two thirds. There you go, we did it. We threaded that needle for the blue, uh, for that blue gate right there. I, I, and I don't know, maybe somebody smarter than me can figure it out how to do a, a better one, right? We don't, we can't go sideways, that wouldn't be a function anymore. Um, but we'll go with that. Reflect, Sheila used this parabola to complete a challenge. What equation could she have used? Okay, so first of all, let's think about this. Uh, the A value, is it gonna be positive or negative, right? Positive values open up upwards, negative A values open up downwards, and so it's opening up upwards, so um, they all have a pi, just wasted that time. Talking about A values, but they're all positive, so they all kind of fit in here. So let's talk about your x-intercepts, right? So it's crossing roughly at the same place, so they're gonna have kind of um, 
they're gonna be in a form where they have x-intercepts and sure enough, this one is a possibility, right? This one is a distinct possibility because you have an x-intercept that uh, negative four and uh, x equals positive four. But let's think about uh, another thing, right? Uh, oh, by the way, no, 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 I wasn't completely wrong. This one has a negative eight value, so you can knock out that first one. Sorry about that. Um, but the other two possibilities are these. This one kind of jumps out at me that it could be a possibility. Why couldn't this third one be a possibility? Well, it's because then you would have a solution or an x-intercept, sorry, uh, right at uh, x equals four, at positive four. It would kind of be touching at four, I'm assuming. So it wouldn't be that one, okay? So unfortunately, so it's gonna be this one. Explain your thinking. You can write that on your own. I've done a lot of the heavy lifting for you, so put whatever I said in your own words. Green 11 challenge number four. Write an equation for the parabola that passes through each set of gates, then press try it. Oh, holy shit. okay. This one might have to be a, a big gigantic one or a really wide one maybe that passes through. Let, let's try that. Let, let me go back and copy this one. Copy and then uh, we're just gonna change this a value to be super wide, right? Let's go one over nine. How about that? One over nine. Oof. You know what? It might work if we shift it over. Let's shift this over to seven. Ooh, too much. Six. Ooh. Five. Oh, okay, um, let's go back to six, but just make the parabola wider. How about that? Let's go to t one over 10. There we go. It worked. It worked. Screen number eight, challenge number five. Write an equation for a parabola that passes between each other. Yeah, okay, same, same deal. This is probably gonna go open up upwards. So we're gonna have a positive A. So let's go with what we had before, but with a positive A. Um, and I'm gonna say that this vertex is gonna, it would work best, I think, down here. What is that, two comma negative seven? Uh, five, six, seven. Two comma negative seven, okay. Two negative seven, negative seven. Let's try with a A value of one first, just to start off. Um, ooh, that's pretty close. Um, how about two? Oh, what? I said two, row one. Two. Oh! So close. Between one and two, one and a half. There we go. There we go. Now, if your math teacher doesn't like one and a half, tell them to fuck off and just write three over two, same thing. They want fractions. You can dazzle them with your knowledge of fractions, which reminds me, a lot of you have trouble with fractions. I don't know why. You might want to work on that, especially if you want to have, if you want, if you want to be successful in your math classes. That is, if you don't want to be successful, that's fine. I guess just go on and be a construction worker or something. But uh, nothing wrong with construction workers. We need them, but uh, for the amount of work that they do, they don't really make a lot of money. But again, if if you like construction, that's if that's your jam. You know, I'm not hating on it. Okay, um, settle the dispute. Thea and Mario disagree about this parabola's equation. Thea, 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 Thea claims it's y equals negative. Okay. So, first of all, that should give you a big clue. Negative or positive A values. Remember, negative A values, which way does it open? It opens downwards. So I had to think about it for a second there. The other one, if it's positive, it, open up, if it opens up upwards. And so, which way does this open up? It opens up downwards. Like for sure it open up, opens up downwards. So, Mario is definitely wrong. So we have to think, Thea, is Thea's correct? Well, let's take a look at her at her x-intercepts uh, because it says x plus one, x plus five, her x-intercepts are actually gonna be on the other side, okay? So if you jumped the gun and you clicked on Thea and you wrote an explanation, rewind a little bit. It's definitely not gonna be Mario. It's definitely not gonna be both. It's definitely not gonna be Thea, given what I just said. It's gonna be neither. Uh, explain your thinking and so uh, write in your own words what I just explained. If you don't understand it, rewind the video and watch me say it over and over and over again um, because not only will that help you it will also get my view time up on this video uh, and help me pump this video out into the algorithm the YouTube algorithm so help me help you help me
Screen 10, impossible slalom. Your task is to create a slalom challenge that is impossible to finish with a quadra. Okay, so in this one, you're gonna create your own, or actually no, you're, you're, you're trying to explain. This is like, like a, a more higher level thinking question here. How would you know that it's impossible if you have one, two, or three different gates? Okay, so let, let's think about this. Let's think about one gate, two gates, and three gates. Or, oh no, you only have to select one, two, or three. Okay, the easiest one, the single gate. Let's see, how, okay, impossible to finish with a quadratic function. How would you create an impossible function with one slalom? I don't think that's possible, right? There's no way you can create an impossible slalom challenge with that because no matter what, you're gonna have, you're gonna have a gravel that's gonna pass through one set of gates, I think. If you know one that's impossible, let me know in the comments. But I'm pretty sure for one, it's impossible to create an impossible slalom. <laughs> uh, yeah, so if you want to write that it's impossible to create an impossible slalom with one gate, be my guest. Two gates, okay. How do you create an impossible slalom challenge? Okay, the one way you could probably do it is, is if you created a gate kind of like this, like that's all on the same x value, right? Because you would no longer have a function, right? You can't have a quadratic function anymore because you would have two outputs for that one input. So um, that's probably the only way you can create an impossible slalom challenge using a quadratic function. If you're not using quadratic functions, then no, you can't do that. Uh, the third one, I guess, again, you, just, you could just put it in line. You can't, uh, that's one way you can do it, right? Um, cause you would have more than one output for that input. So I, I think that's the only way to do it for, for three as well. So in any case, like as long as you have more than one output, you can't really have a quadratic function do a solemn challenge, if that makes sense. If I'm confusing you, you're watching a free video online of some, some weirdo math teacher explaining things on YouTube. So I, I don't know what to tell you. Go watch a Khan Academy video or something. And congratulations, you're on screen 11. You're going to create a challenge for your fellow students, um, which we are not gonna do here because um, there's no classroom here. With that said, thank you for watching it. Another episode of my Desmos tutorials. If I helped you, please like and subscribe to my channel because it helps me move up in the rankings of the YouTube world and hopefully provide even more help to even more students. Nobody pays me for this. I'm just doing this out of the goodness of my heart because I think a lot of my students are on YouTube anyway. So, uh, hey, hi students. If you're seeing me curse online, uh, I'm sorry. Thanks for watching. See you on the next episode. Bye.